Day 10. So, um... I'm the meteorologist, but... But does fog usually linger like this for days on end? It's been a full week since the fog rolled into the inner parts of our town, and nearly a week and a half since our town was put on lockdown. If, I feel like... Yeah, that's way beyond time that someone should be coming up with some sort of plan to fix whatever, you know, whatever it is that's going on around here. So, so today I woke up, same as always, you know, with our daughter running in, exclaiming what she wanted for breakfast. Daddy, I want waffles. As I walk downstairs to throw some waffles in the toaster, I glance outside and I notice that now familiar shimmering purple fog outside, it's... Um, you know, almost completely unchanged over the past week. The past week has remained pretty much, you know, uneventful, other than the random screams and the uh, flaming rodent spiders uh, randomly running past our house. Twice since the first time have we seen a person screaming as they, they chased one of the animals past our house. However, those two, they weren't, they weren't engulfed in flames like the first one. The other day, Grace was looking out the window as one of those flaming spider things um, just stopped and sat in her yard. As she gazed out at it, she suddenly screamed as they locked eyes, and the rush of, of, um, horrific visions that kind of, like, flashed in her mind. She collapsed after a few seconds, breaking eye contact and stopping the flood of images. And moments later, she described to me what she saw as the girls played in the other room. Dark red blood-stained walls surrounding um, insane medieval-style torture devices, you know, battered, beaten, virtually destroyed bodies of screaming victims strapped to devices being whipped, being tortured, dark clouds surrounding distant malevolent mountains made of dead and decimated bodies, the horrific scenes of people having heads and limbs brutally ripped from their bodies, countless other the hellish factions of time all flashed past in just a few seconds. She then looked at me with a look on her face saying that she understood what was happening to me. You know, what had happened that first time when I had made eye contact with the creatures. At that moment we both realized that we needed to avoid looking at them whenever they came around to prevent that, that paralyzing mental assault from happening again. Day 15. Um, so today, uh, today was the first day that we saw what was, what was, uh, Lurking out there in the fog. So it, it came midday. I was standing, I was staring out the window into the fog as Grace and the girls played quietly in the toy room. I noticed it first because our dogs in unison let out these quiet woofs. They both retreated upstairs, scared. Which in retrospect, you know, it seemed very odd behavior for them. So, at least for me anyway. It was typically fearless. Well, Bodie is more of a coward. Anyway, um... After I looked back and watched the dogs leave the room, I returned my gaze to the fog out the window. Watching this pearlescent swirl, brilliant colors through the rest of the dismal gray we had grown so accustomed to over the past two weeks. As I watched out into the gray, a um, pale form took shape approaching the house. As it began to come more into view, I looked back, whispering to Grace. Grace. Very quietly, take the girls upstairs. Please be as silent as you can. There's, there's something outside coming up to the house. What is it? She replied as she picked Izzy up and began to herd Addie quietly up the steps. Um, I don't know. But it, it doesn't look good. Please, try to stay quiet. I'll, I'll be right behind you, I whispered. Watching her and the girls disappear up the steps quietly. As I turned back around, the creature had made it halfway into the yard before it paused. I hid to the edge of the window, keeping my eyes on the creature, trying to learn as much as I could about this new being. It was covered in smooth, pale skin, pulled way too tight over its unusually placed muscles, almost humanoid, yet crouched, and walking on all fours, thin, excessively long forearms attached to shorter, overly muscular shoulders and upper arms, hands confusingly narrow with six spindly digits sprouting from both ends, tipped with these long, dark, talon-like claws. 
Three of the fingers were longer and protruded from the front. Three were shorter, protruding from the back, like that of a chameleon. The neck, it was long but thin. It was holding a nearly featureless, elongated head, the shape of a, of a perfect oval. It wasn't a mouth. There were three two-inch vertical slits, which I could only assume functioned as its nose. It had what looked like large, snow-white, lidless eyes. Four horns shot from the top of its skull, with two larger, thick, dark, ridged horns, and nearly an S-shape came from the very top. It's frighteningly sharp at the tips. The last two were further back on its skull, much thinner. They were made this, this slow arc away from its skull, starting from the base of its neck, traveling down along the sides of its spine. Thin, they were black, sharp spindles. Its chest, again, overly muscular, it was attached to an impossibly thin waist. The legs jointed more like a dog, but again, muscular and bulky at the thighs attached to no longer thin lower legs and feet, nearly identical to its hands, the only difference being the talons on the feet. They looked, they looked slightly smaller, maybe. As I sat there watching the creature, I noticed that it moved very deliberate, yet jerky movements, methodical as if they were searching for something, or hunting. Even with no mouth, I could hear it making clicking noises as it swept its head around. Just as I thought to turn around and retreat upstairs with the girls, the creature jerked its head to focus on something off in the distance. From its ribcage, four slits opened that looked like shark gills. It let out a guttural screech that stabbed pain in my ears and pierced my brain with horrendous torment, yet I, I couldn't move to cover them for fear that the creature would notice me. If I moved at the edge of the window, it surely would see me. Only a few seconds of that sound caused me to feel like I was going to pass out. And then the sound ceased. The creature expelled a purple-gray cloud from its gills, and then it and then it bounded off away from the house at an insane pace, disappearing into the fog. The second it was no longer in view, I held my hands to my ears and I winced in pain before I turned to run upstairs to tell Grace what had happened. That night we gathered everyone in the bedroom to sleep and, and we grabbed any and all forms of weapons we could find in the house. I mean, sadly, nothing I kept around the house would be all that effective. We had kitchen knives, we duct taped dowel rods, one baseball bat, a, a young adult bow, no arrows. The girls had no trouble as well as the dogs, but Grace and I, it was, it was a very sleepless night. We lied awake, whispering back and forth, trying to concoct a plan, knowing that we had very limited options, not being able to leave the town, not knowing how many of those, those, those creatures there are out, out there, or, or if any others that we haven't seen yet are, are out there. Our food supply is starting to dwindle. We probably have enough food for maybe a half a week. Then we'll need to venture out to the house to see what we can find. I, I wonder how others are doing in the town. I wish we were friends with or at least talk to our neighbors more. Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and thank you so much for listening to tonight's story, whether it be an episode of something or tonight's podcast or tonight's YouTube. For all of you who are interested in seeing me do things besides uh, telling horror stories, I'm also on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Mr. Creepypasta. I've been playing through Resident Evil the entire series with my sister-in-law for the very first time for both of us. So that's a lot of fun if you'd ever like to join me for that. And a very big thank you to all my Patreons, and you can always join them at patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta. People like Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Ken Lando Higuchi, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Chapinski, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Sandy Barney, G Weevil 3, Diana Krauss, Stephen Van Huss, Chance Burnett, 
Tristan Pelton, Nico Cal, The Ginger Bros, Dante Rao, Rafael Rodriguez, Last Blade Song, Eliminator 86, Nebsky, Steampunk Sinner, Caleb Dougal, Daniel Paulson, Sky Harbor, The Homeless Bird 93, Bobby Carmen, Liam Newman, Aaron Stormcrow, Barbara Macedo, Thomas Burgett, Azazel Rotten, Let's Get Scared, S-Man, Andrew Kirisuba Warnock, Bad Honey, Creepypasta Adam, Someone You Love, Brennan Wright, Said The King 56, and Somber Puppet. Thank you guys so much for your continued support to all of you on Patreon, you guys that are down there in the description and everyone else. And thank you all for listening and watching and being subscribed. Sweet dreams. <laughs>